Well, welcome to another set of Arc de la Guerre Battle Reports, this time from the Beachhead Competition in sunny seaside Bournemouth, the jewel of the South Coast. Um, Dorset's, or is it Dorset? Probably Dorset's most wonderful, um, wasn't really there in the 1800s, um, seaside resort as it was invented, so I'm told, by um, a man who just thought, if I put a railway here, then um, we can make a town and I'll make some money. So a little bit of weird history for you there, but looking at weird history, here is my 28 mm Assyrians, which um, with with some fabulous wallpaper on the chariots and um, possibly the least <laughs> inspiring um, piece of, it's supposed to look a bit like a, um, well, a giraffe pelt on the back of um, the, the chariot horses. But we'll tell you more about those. Um, originally, I was supposed to be using a 15 mil army in this competition. And I was hoping to use some Hittites, but unfortunately, or fortunately, as maybe as it will turn out, um, there were odd numbers of people in both competitions and I'd offered to flip over. So an Assyrian army that was very similar to the one that I used at Roll Call the year before, but slightly different, ended up being wheeled out for this competition, which was themed from biblical to the early classical. So not well, barely into the Roman era, but um, catching all the Macedonians and Alexandrians, but with the bulk of the theme being biblical. And that's why I used Assyrians. It's the only 28 mil army I've got that fitted that theme. So let's, let's have a look at them and see what I did. So last time, yeah, the army was pretty similar to this, but what I chose to do to, um, to tweak it is, is, is really happened in that first command where um, I made the um, I made two line infantry and two well two guardsmen to start with with everything um, well everything apart from impact which these troops in the real world um, or if you want these troops to be good they really want so vanilla swordsmen heavy swordsmen armor support elite um, two of them they're as tough as old boots but because they don't have impact or any of those sort of first round clever factors, they're just going to, you know, chew their way through stuff or be resilient. It's an army without spearmen in a period where there are chariots. So I just thought, let's make them as good as possible. There could be a lot of shooting. There could be a lot of chariotry in it. Those ones are the, um, you know, the battering ram that very slowly just sort of grinds into, um, into the the enemy army. There's a couple of heavy infantry swordsmen bowmen, again not as good against cavalry as heavy spearmen bowmen units, but as, as good as it counts. Um, there's an extra heavy swordsman in there towards the bottom of this, making this sort of five five wide frontage of heavy cavalry, um, sorry, heavy infantry there, which to be honest I put in partly with that theory of taking on a lot of shooting troops potentially, partly just to give the army a bit more resilience and partly because I've got them. They're painted up and um, they didn't get an outing last time. So I thought I'd let them have a go. I reduced the number of horsemen probably in the army. A couple of heavy cavalry and a light cavalry. So this first command is kind of a two commands in one. It's a block of five heavy infantry who shoot a bit. And it's a little block of three cavalry, two heavy cavalry and a light cavalry to zoom around and do a flank. So this is typically going to sit on one flank. The middle, um, I think our podcast had an argument um, or a discussion about how many chariots you need in a Syrian army. I'd actually reduced it to two in this list. Um, they are pretty expensive. And I did. I do seem to find that what happens is you end up expecting them to try and win. Um, anybody who's watched my reports from uh, Plymouth will see that kind of temptation um, in effect with um, with knights in that particular competition but you expect them to sort of win on their own and then they end up meeting someone else's heavy chariots and they're just kind of neutralized so i just wanted to do something a bit more interesting and and fight around them and then the the third command is is sort of a copy of the first one but it's medium foot instead of heavy foot so there's going to be some terrain on table the first two commands can't really do a lot about it this one can stick two mixed shooters into it a javelin man and a line infantry who's got support as well so the two mixed shooters and the supported spear are sort of all right in the open against um nothing too dangerous with mounted and then there's a slightly more lightweight cavalry command here with one heavy well two heavy cap no actually slightly more heavyweight now i look at it Three, three cavalry, two are heavy, one medium, and a light cavalry bow. Again, a brilliant commander. So this is this is sort of a slightly different mirror image of the first one. It's a two commands in one command, a chunk of cavalry with a light horse outrider, and a chunk of medium foot. So that's how the army was. 
Um, that's the chariots. This is another one with um, some probably a Syrian relief on the side of it. And look, oh, that's astonishing painting that. that, that it, it almost looks like there's a real leopard there, isn't it? Didn't I do well? Um, but in the first battle, um, we were fighting, I think it was a Huri Matani. We'll find out in the next shot on a fairly open table. This was um, Andy Underwood's really, really nicely painted. Um, lots of these chariots, light chariots, light chariot armor elite which are nearly as good as heavy um, heavy chariots now under the version 4 under the gear rules and you can see they clearly wanted a pretty open table to sweep around and and go backwards and forwards with these um cavalry shooting ca shooting cavalry chariots and whittle away at whatever was coming to face them but fortunately um looks like i got the first move here and my army has jumped ahead and I've had to stretch it. You know, they've got a lot of width. They're going to try and go around the flanks. I can only defend on on this piece of terrain, which looks like a field for so long, if I do want to push forward. And I'm going to have to get forward and, and push into them. So I've actually been forced to leave some pretty big gaps in my line, hoping that if these um, enemy do sort of start to concentrate on something, my army can kind of concentrate up as well. The slightly more vulnerable shooters are, are wrapped in the middle. Of these heavy infantry here this is my this is the first command as you can see a little outrider heavy cavalry command and this this thing that puts out shooting two chariots down the middle covering quite a lot of space and then these medium foot daring to come out of the terrain and, and push forwards with this slightly smaller cavalry force but but even so this is going to be about how quickly these guys can redeploy so let's have a look at this list so here we are um you can see it here light chariot bow armored elite with general in one of them those are basically heavy cavalry elite um, with bow. So if you imagine them as three heavy cavalry elite bow, it's almost a, a Sassanid army with wheels, I suspect, this one. Um, a couple of light foot to go with it. Same, um, five more chariots, um, all got bow. Only one of them's ordinary, so they're all very good as well. Um, two medium sword. Um, let's see, can we even see where they were over there? I think they're lurking at the background here. Um, give some more filler. And then that's exactly the same. So, um, and then there was a, light horse and a cavalryman somewhere in in ambush as well so it's a big army it's pretty mobile can i get the jump on it so what happens here is <coughs> i've sort of you know this piece of terrain this is another field i think i'd actually ambush some people behind here to give them a little bit of an extra start and um actually maybe not actually but um because i don't think you can do that but but these guys would rush forward and to try and intimidate the um the light infantry I've really got to put a press on these before they get to redeploy and, and maneuver. So this is the bigger cavalry command, two heavy cavalry here, the medium cavalry with the pale blue shield, the light horse bow, um, and my javelin man, um, su supported by, a, I think it's a slinger there, really getting up close and personal to stop this army trying to get around the flank of, of mine. Over on the other side, it looks very much like they're trying to do that tactic of come forward, shoot, see how they're doing but but i do have two proper shooters here and all these cavalry shoot as well so in some ways this is just not a good matchup for for this army particularly as it's not quite got the jump on me and, and i managed to get a long way down the table with those two two brilliant generals and some good early pip dice but you know there's still space for them to maneuver and it looks like i've already taken a shooting hit there which does start to make these vulnerable chariots elite armored heavy cavalry effectively that's that's pretty decent they can do okay but but not as good as um as the elite um, infantry here so so what's happening we've got more and more rounds of shooting from these elite shooters and i'm starting to pick up hits which is starting to make my guys nowhere near as good as they should be and you get into this face off of do my heavy infantry want to charge in probably not if they're injured because that kind of makes it even these guys can always break off and come back and shoot again my shooting has clearly done very little despite having these two proper shooters here in the middle they've they've not really achieved much at all and um actually having a look at that what's what's gone on there yep there's still all four of them there um in fact i've split out just to cover this table i've had to split this formation and send a single unit over there just to kind of cause trouble so big gaps i'm having to be bold and live with big gaps just to trade that off against pushing them pushing them back across the table so what have we got here um well that's the shot that we saw before we've seen that before so this isolated guy he's taken a hit that's meant that the chariots have decided to chance their arm and, and come in they've got an overlap i've taken a hit they're not great at all against heavy infantry but um that's that's probably worth a punt for them just all that power of shooting particularly with my chariots still some way away 
but in some ways this is something I'm kind of happy with these are a resilient block of men all you know fighting spears in all directions they can draw these guys into protracted combat they're not gonna or they shouldn't fall over that quickly and it may well buy more time if I'm pinning that group in in place this is what they've done they've rushed up bravely up the field raised their shields and they're just forming a sort of defensive bastion which has focused the enemy's attention um, over here looks like my medium cavalry and, and the other Scythian light horse are no longer there they've either retreated or they've been beaten um, my, my javelin are involved in a bit of a slog with these light infantry but here you can see my shooting cavalry the two heavy cavalry the purple and the, the red fighting off another couple still not got any hits on them which is a little bit annoying despite the fact of my shooters here supporting as well but that's a potential problem unless I can come back and, and plug it but as you see with these heavy infantry um, already engaged here that's tempted um, the rest of this lot to actually stand against my heavy chariots now uh, looking at this this does look like it's a pretty a lot of horses a lot of lead weight chariots going into these much smaller ones but but as we said right at the start elite armored um, light chariots are now pretty much the same as as heavy chariots there's not a lot in it there's just the impact that these guys get in the first round to differentiate them but that's a general that cancels out the impact that's an overlap that cancels out the impact these guys can actually stand up or should be able to stand up against my chariots wallpaper and all even with all of these crew because you know this is just a, a graduation of different types there are, they aren't really two massively different types anymore you know light chariots are proper if you use them properly combat capable troops they're no longer sort of skirmishes on wheels that they have to run away which gives them that, that proper battlefield role so over here on the other side it did look like i must have evaded away I've, I've thrown these guys back but but again my army has been pulled wider to close up all these gaps that the probing probing enemy chariots are doing and there's a, a vicious exchange of fire here that both sides are sort of shrugging off quite well but i'm i'm really really stretched pretty thin here and there's a potential big hole if these do um if any of these units do fold this could be really quite quite tragic quite quickly but but here you know the power of assyrian territory has obviously done tremendous business on these guys you can see one guy's broken off and run away looks like the general's been killed something else has been killed this guy's still sucked in combat so in here um more horses more legs more legs good really um probably the support from these guys coming up to help as well presumably maybe even support from this light infantry when you know they were they were run through by the chariots as the battle starts to break up they can pop in and, and support and take big holes and so this this fight in the middle that the bravery of these guys this sort of shields up little formation drew the enemy chariotry in and then tempted them to try and stand against the heavier chariotry has really really not worked out at all for the um the Huri Mitani on on the other side and um this bastion is still there with only one hit they're still slugging it out their armor their elite status is working really well so over here still looks like i'm starting to take a few shooting hits there's a hit there um still can't see too much on the other side not a lot really happening but but i've just about pegged it back they you know the fact that i do have more numerous troops here one two three proper combat units three proper combat units there and they've got a sort of problem over this side um even though my loads have, have kind of died they've not been able to force a way through just because these guys are being very very resilient to to the storm of arrows that's coming towards them um so flipping right over to the other side of the table um it looks like we're by a waterway here but that was actually the carpet in the venue but it looks great in these photos um, i'll pretend that's mine and um you can see this is where all this big block of stuff this is my big command with four well, four heavy infantry there one was busy we've seen a lot of him a couple of cavalry they've managed to get themselves sort of butted up against the edge of the table to give no opportunity here for these guys to um, to get round and they're just exchanging shooting at the moment I don't quite want to charge in it's not quite advantageous enough particularly with these weak bowmen they're supposed to be putting out fire my general sort of rushing backwards and forwards encouraging his men to to hold out against the, the shooting and the same is happening on the other side there's a lot of um, archery going back and forth looks like I've rallied some hits off he's doing his job of inspiring the men and um, these these chaps here still taking a couple of hits with these shield hit markers 
that I'm I'm using. So everybody is just waiting for the other side to blink and, and make that very first move. And whoosh, there it is. Something's happened. So let's have a look. Can we see what this actually is? Um, who went first? Is that my line going forward? So possibly it looks like these guys have decided to go in, drive. Um, yeah, that must be it. The swordsmen have come round, split round their chariots. That's tempted my cavalry to go in. That's sort of a squishy target. This is still a face off. But if, if my cavalry go in there, they've got to go in here against the chariots as well. And I pushed. This is the bog standard unit of heavy infantry. Pushed them into um, into this chariot in, in the open. They're, they're tough. They're resilient. They're a proper shield wall. But you know those are elite. They're armoured. They've got more resilience in some ways than me. And again, as we've seen before, um, proper sort of textbook tactics. When the battle starts to break down, the little units of light infantry zip out and um, start adding bonuses on the flanks. They've, they're just short of these guys. They're not in combat. They will eventually be you know, forced away. But it's really about trying to do some hits here, although it doesn't look like that's worked particularly well. And it does mean there's more shooting being concentrated this way. So really putting some pressure on, um, on the enemy on this flank now. Um, whereas in the middle, the chariots have almost sort of taken breath. They've taken stock. They've kind of run out of targets. What they're doing now is they're just finishing off this guy who is still involved in this long fight against um, against the elite infantry. Um, the chariots have come back. Um, the lone chariot has come back just to try and stop this guy having a free run, possibly at the baggage or somewhere else. And it looks like my heavy infantry, which I now don't have to join in with the chariots, are starting to wheel outwards and put pressure on the left hand flank as well. That punch in the middle is just starting to be you know ripped apart and, and unfolded back into the two wings of the um, of the enemy army so over on this side finally finally it looks like um look he's he's sweating he's been um he's been shooting for a long time that does look disturbingly like someone wearing um white socks and shorts which is a bit bold for for february but never mind um in the sea there yeah but he he just can't believe it's taken that long to get one hit on my um Scythian cavalry but um this one that's a two hitter so they're starting to struggle against the heavy infantry this again could be quite a big hole this is suddenly a little bit scary um but flipping back to the other side yep you can see now these um these medium swordsman bowman types are starting to get a formation back together to put more shooting pressure on what's been whittled away some of the chariots been whittled away it all is all about that big immediate smash and that decisive win for the chariots in the middle has freed up so many of my troops to push push out and start pouring huge amounts of fire and finally these guys are starting to crumble um, on that basis so here looks like the the, um, the general's chariot is still chugging forwards and probably without their own commander they've decided this is the time to stop. The baggage is a little bit close. That that levee looks like it might be in trouble if my, my general got to it. So they're hanging on, and this may well be the um, the opposition suddenly looking at trying to you know rescue some points and do some damage before they kind of go down as the general wades in and and takes a hit. But um, yeah, and that I think must have been it with um, with me managing to punch through the middle and then push out from from that using those troops um, to to take advantage of that huge opportunity in the middle to neutralize the the ability of the enemy to sort of fall back and keep on shooting and and whittle me away but as you can see you know if, if you look back through that battle a lot of these elite armored light chariots really really were able to take quite a lot of punishment from even from in infantry archers before that hole in the middle kind of started to do for them and, and tip them over and you know eventually this chariot that i don't think features in the battle reports this is one of the four i own that um, didn't make it down to the seaside this time. Um, they they did do the business and punch through the middle. That first round impact, the general, the elite status, just gave them that extra edge to um, to really counter the enemy chariots and, um, and force them to kind of stand and fight. So that that was the outcome of the first battle.